It's good now or? Yeah, okay. Hello everyone, thanks for coming. Uh, I'm, I'm Rally, I'm a P computer science PhD candidate at Northeastern working on security and privacy and today we're gonna talk about cryptography in Python. So cryptography is very ubiquitous today. We use it everywhere from your mobile phone apps to hard, full hard disk encryption and even your wireless uh, connection at home. It's almost everywhere. Uh, every, every respectable program language has some sort of support for encryption and decryption or cryptographic libraries. And it's even em embedded inside your CPUs. What I mean by being embedded inside CPUs, right now, for example, Intel, AM, even AMD CPUs have support for uh, AES encryption, which means by one AES, uh, by one assembly instruction, you can just encrypt or decrypt your messages. And uh, to be honest, it's really not hard to do crypto, uh, crypto in a right way, but, uh, but there are a lot of crypto failures in real world. For example, in, in case of password breaches in uh, LinkedIn, Adobe, and Ashley Madison, they were uh, either not uh, solving their password or encrypting in ECB format. Uh, Wi-Fi, they have something called the uh, web, which was completely broken because they're using the re reusing their IV or initialization vector. Uh, Snapchat, uh, they were hard coding the encryption decryption key inside the app and they were using ECB mod which means it's completely broken and even in the case of Debian Linux they had a weak uh, random number generation which uh, uh, resulted in breaking a lot of SSH, SSH keys. So before me there was a talk on uh, cryptography in general and uh, John gave a very good introduction to whole cri uh, crypto uh, so I'm not going to go to the cl classic crypto anymore I'm, I'm just going to talk about modern crypto. Uh, so, uh, in cri uh, modern crypto, we have two forms, the symmetric encryption and asymmetric encryption. Uh, as you can see, in symmetric encryption, we use the same key for both encryption and decryption. And the hard part in symmetric is to transfer this key in a uh, secure way. And if you have a way to transmit a very long secure key, then you uh, can either use that or even uh, send your messages. Uh, a more modern innovation in cryptography was asymmetric encryption or what we call public encry encryption. Uh, the first instance was in 1970s, uh, Diffie-Hellman. Uh, and the way it works, you have two keys, a public key and a private key. A public key can be public and you announce it to the world and you have a private key that you have to keep it to yourself. Uh, what you can do to encrypt, you can encrypt the message with your public key and decrypt it with a private key. And uh, if you share your public key with the world, they cannot uh, infer what is your private key. So it's one way function. From the private key, you can get your public key, but from the public key, you cannot infer the private key. Uh, the differences between the symmetric and asymmetric encryption is that symmetric encryption only at software level is about 1,000 times faster. And right now, at, when you have hardware support, it's gonna be even much faster. Uh, the other problem is you don't, uh, for symmetric key, you need to share your secret key, but in public and private, you can just announce your public key. Uh, and it has uh, support in uh, a CPU. And for in, in every real uh, world system, like when you use SSL or SSH, you have a combination of public encryption plus symmetric encryption. You combine the both. Uh, the most famous uh, or the currently used uh, symmetric encryption algorithm is called AES. It's Advanced Encryption Standard, uh, also known as Reindel. It was uh, invented by two Belgian cryptographers and it was part of the National Institute of Stand Standard and Technology or NIST competition to find the next uh, cryptographic algorithm. Uh, it had a couple of requirements. One of them was it should be fast in both software and hardware implementation. For example, something like this was really fast in hardware implementation, but it was slower in uh, software. And the other requirement that the block size should be 128 uh, bits, and the key sizes should be 128, 192, and 256. Uh, this uh, algorithm was first published in 98 and there uh, a couple of true uh, um, true couple of uh, competition in 2001 it was finally final uh, standardized finalized and published to the public the other candidates were mars rc6 serpent and twofish uh, they are already implement, in, implemented in the real world but no one used them that much AES is something called uh, a cipher block, which means it operates on a block of cipher, and uh, that block says 128 bits. Your data should be 128 bits, and it just works on that uh, block of data. It just transforms that data to something gibberish, and later on you can convert that gibberish to something meaningful. Uh, 
if you have a uh, message that is longer than 128 bits, you just need to encrypt each block and combine them in a way together. So exactly like making a coffee, you have a coffee beans, you have water and milk. Uh, it depends how you're gonna uh, combine them together. At the end, you're gonna get coffee. But it, uh, if you just eat everything separately, it's not gonna be a real coffee. There is a procedure. Some of them are better, some of them are worse, and some of them are just wrong. Uh, in terms of uh, modes of operation for crypto, ECB is like drinking your every separate piece of your coffee uh, separately. It's just wrong. Never use it. If you see somewhere, uh, it's wrong. Uh, the CBC and CTR, both of them are uh, secure. A CTR uh, has, or the counter mode has more functionality. It means you can do parallel encryption and decryption, so it's going to be faster. And you, can, you don't need to go sequential. You, can, uh, you, you don't need to encrypt or decrypt your messages uh, sequentially. And to give you a graphical representation of what's the difference between uh, ECB and CBC encryption, for example, the original version, if, if that's Tux Linux uh, image. If you encrypt it with using something ECB, uh, after encryption, you're still going to see the patterns inside your data. So it means it's going to be broken. Uh, I won't be able to tell exactly what was the message from just looking at the data, but I can see the patterns inside it. But if you use something like CBC or CTR, it's going to completely uh, get rid of the pattern that you have in data. So it's going to completely look random. That's why you should never use ECB. Uh, the best, uh, uh, the RSA or invented by Rivas, Shamir, and Edelman is the first practical public key encryption system that we have. Uh, it was published in 1977, uh, almost 40 years ago, and it was patented until 2001. That's why, for example, something like Elgamon that was mentioned in the previous talk, and something called the DSA, the Digital Signature Algorithm based on Elgamon, were being used in many protocols. It was, RCA was, RSA was patented until 2001. Uh, and it's based on the hardness of factoring problem and modular arithmetic. So, the definition of RSA is you have a message, M, and uh, the, uh, the uh, decryption, D, and ciphertext, C. The way it works, you just uh, choose a number, a random number, E, and you exponent your message to E, and then do a mod operation. You get the ciphertext. And if you do the same thing with the private key and cipher, you get M. Uh, a more simplistic, uh, this, is, uh, this encryption is very simplistic. It's called textbook RSA and it's not secure in, in, in something called the INCPA or uh, chosen plain text attack. attack. Uh, uh, but uh, you get two big random numbers, a P and a Q, uh, and, do, uh, and you uh, uh, get N, which is the calc uh, multiplication of your P and Q, and you calculate the phi of N. There's P minus one and Q minus one. We're gonna see an example after this. And then you calculate uh, your encryption key, which is a co-prime to your phi of N, and it's between one to five of n. And you can get the inverse, uh, and your private key is gonna be the inverse of your public key, or D, uh, in mod n. And one of the, uh, the property of this RSA is that if you do uh, encryption of decryption of a message, or uh, uh, encryption of a decryption of message, at the end you're gonna end up with n. It's based on Euler's theorem, because e to the power of D is equal to one, so m to the power of one is gonna be one, uh, m at the end. So to give you a better view of example, for example, if we take P and Q as random numbers. In a real world, these random numbers are much bigger. So think of about 400 digits instead of one, two, three digits. In real world, these numbers are gonna be more than 400 digits. But for example, uh, imagine we have P and Q, both are prime numbers. Uh, N would be 55, five times 11, 55. And our phi of N would be uh, 10 times four or 40. Uh, then uh, we choose uh, the encryption key or E, something that's prime and between uh, one, two, five of N, three. So to calculate the D or the private key, you need to find the inverse of your uh, encryption key or E uh, inside the five of N. It should, when you do uh, E times D mod of N that we had in previous talk, you should get one. So if three is, uh, if E is three, then D be 27, at the end you're gonna end up with 91 and 91, uh, uh, 90, uh, 81, and 81 mod of 80 is one. So that's why it's a, uh, 27 is inverse of E in phi of N. And your public key is gonna be the E and the number N, and your private key is gonna be D and your number N. Uh, 
uh, for and then if your message uh, if you can represent each uh, message for like binary or ASCII number as a number so everything is a byte all bytes are a number so you can just do exponential and numbers so if uh, your message is 2 then the encryption of your message is going to be 8 and the decryption of message 8 to the power of 27 is going to be 2 again you get the same message the other crypto primitive that we have is hashing function what it does, you take a long, a big message, and you can generate a digest, uh, which is much shorter. Uh, one of the reasons that we use this, for example, when you download a file from internet, uh, you see something called the hash of the file, when you want to make sure your file is exactly the same. So if you make a modification to one bit in the file, you're gonna get a completely different hash. This way you can make sure the integrity of your files. Uh, and uh, a hashing function should have three uh, properties. One of them is pre-image, the se second pre-image, and the collisions. Which means, if I give you a hash of message, it should be inversal. You shouldn't, tell, you shouldn't be able to tell me what was the message that I just produced the hash of. The other thing is, if you, I give you M and uh, you have the hash of it, you shouldn't be uh, too able to find another message M prime that's not equal to M and has the same hash. And the other property is if you, you shouldn't be able to choose any two messages that are not equal and have the same hash. These are the properties that we want. And right now the recommendation is to use SHA-2 or SHA-3. So fortunately you don't need to implement any of these cryptographic primitives or know much about them. You just need to know the basic idea behind them and what properties they provide, provide and what they are. Uh, right now in Python, uh, in, uh, like two, three years ago, it wasn't that great to support, but right now we have more than half a dozen cryptographic libraries in Python that do everything correctly. Uh, they are cr created by people who know how to actually implement uh, uh, crypto protocols in a secure way. Because just encrypting uh, some uh, basic modular arithmetic is easy, but making sure if it's secure against timing attacks and etc. is much harder. Uh, so, uh, Pi Crypto is the first uh, oldest and mostly wide cryptographic library in the wide right now, but it's not that updated anymore, and the code is kind of ad hoc based, so the C-based code that the Python calls is created by the per person himself. Uh, M2 Crypto uh, has bindings, the SWIG bindings, to OpenSSL code, so the C code is secure, but the API and documentation are not as great. Uh, the uh, alternative that I really like, and it's a newer project, it's called uh, Cryptography, it's um, created by PyCA, or the Python Cryptography Authority. Uh, they are a group, uh, they're very involved and very active. Uh, um, the other properties as uh, Cryptography works on Python 2, Python 3, and even PyPy implementation of Python. So you can use it with almost everything. The other benefit is that it has open SSL CFI bindings. So CFI is a newer uh, wrapper kind of functionality that you can call your C code from your Python or other scripting languages. Uh, and it's, uh, the, the code is very readable. They have a good documentation with a caution. Uh, for example, you don't use this cryptographic protocol. It's broken or how to use cryptographic protocol in a secure way. And there are other uh, examples like PyNSCL or NSS that uses the Firefox. Uh, but cryptography, I think, is like if I had to recommend one cryptographic protocol, it would be the cryptography protocol. To give you some examples of how, the, how to use the protocols, for example, if you want to make a sh uh, hash of uh, your messages, what you need to do, you just need to import your back, default back, backend. Uh, the default backend would be OpenSSL. And also you need to tell from your primitives what you want to, so all these cryptographic functionalities that we talked are uh, primitive. You have to say, I want to Im uh, import the hashing function from my primitives. And then just to create a hash, you create a digest of your message. You say from the hashes, I want to create a hash, and what kind of hashing mechanism that you want to use. We are using SHA-2, and the size of 256 uh, byte, uh, bits. And we say as the back end, use the default back end. And at the end, you can just say your digest.update, the message that you want to produce the digest of, and you finalize, you say, okay, I'm done with the message that I want to create a digest. And you get a digest. And if, for example, this uh, is the uh, hash of PyGotham 2016 in, B in base 64 encoding. So to do something as, as uh, like AES is as simple as a few lines of code. You import uh, OS. Uh, OS has some functionality called URandom for generating random numbers. The random numbers they generate are cryptographically secure, and it's not blocking. It means 
because if you do OS dot random is a blocking function, means it waits for the CPU to generate enough, uh, enough entropy. But U random just uses the entropy inside the random to use as a seed and uses a pseudo random number generator to create a random number. So for, for every uh, application, you can just use U random. It's completely secure. Uh, always use OS dot U random to ge generate keys or your random numbers. And you can specify the size that you want in bytes. So we said AES is 128 bits, so we say 16 bytes. Uh, and you can choose your cipher. You say, I want to use this algorithm with this key. I'm using it in the CBC mode that we talked about. We had the ECB, CBC, and CTR. The CBC one was secure. Uh, we use the CBC with this IV, and uh, we say use the default back end. Uh, and then you just call your encryptor function with whatever you want to encrypt, increment, uh, encrypt and you finalize it. And to decrypt the message, you just pass your ciphertext and you call your decryptor function. For using something like RSA, again, you don't need to delve into the key generation yourself. You can just call the key generation, key generation functionality inside the library. Uh, what you do, you uh, say from your primitives, RSA was asymmetric or a public encryption. You import RSA from the asymmetric and you say you want to generate a private key uh, with public exponent that it, these, these are standards, like this public exponent is a standard public exponent. Your public exponent can be something that you use many times and the private key is the important one and it's private. And you uh, determine your key size. Right now, 248 is uh, anything above 124. It should be definitely above 124. But even 120, uh, 1024 is not that secure. So you have to use something around 2048, which means 2048 bits of security, which gives you an equivalent of 128 bit symmetric key security. Uh, and then to get a public key, you can just, uh, after you generate your uh, private key, you just find, uh, call the public key and you get the public key of your private key. To encrypt a message, uh, uh, if you remember, we talked the textbook RSA is insecure. So uh, in, uh, because if you have the same message, the encryption is always going to be the same. So there is something called the OAP padding which introduces a, a randomness. If you have two same messages, the encryption each time is gonna be different. You can still decrypt the message, but the encryption each time is gonna be different. So you're not gonna leak any information. That's called the OAP. So you say, what is your message? You create your encryptor. For, by, by pub, for example, you're using your public key to encrypt the message. You use, I want to use my public key to encrypt the message. The padding, the OAP is to pr uh, pr uh, mitigate against this leakage attack. And then you say what hashing function you want to use. So these are the standards. Again, anything after the o, uh, padding OAP, you can just uh, copy this code exactly. You don't need to change anything here, this standard code. And for uh, decrypting the same message, you just you, you use your private key, decrypt the ciphertext that you just created here, and everything is exactly the same. Uh, if you just want to encrypt, for example, your uh, files on your computer uh, uh, or something like that, the cryptography is something, uh, has some functionality or some recipe called Fernet. It does the AES in CBC mode, uh, what, 128-bit uh, key size, and it also produces a Mac to make sure your files haven't been modified. So you can just use that. You don't need to implement anything, just one line of code. And you just have to, for example, you can, uh, one of the ways that you can cre create a, or remember this random key is that you have a simple password and then by some uh, uh, caching function, you expand your simple password to a key size and then use as your key. Uh, uh, so you can just give, pass it your key. Uh, you can either randomly generate it or pass it your own key that you are using and then you uh, encrypt whatever you want. You get a token, and that token is the encryption of your message plus hashing uh, uh, um, or the authentication code. And then you can just simply decrypt whatever you had that token exactly. So a few takeaways, and never invent your own cryptographic protocol or algorithm because there are people who are cryptograph uh, cryptographers and experts and have already produced these things. Everyone is using them. If they're good enough for top secret document, they're good enough for us. Uh, don't implement your own crypto library, even though all this uh, arithmetic or mathematics is very simple. You need to ca take care of side channel attacks. For example, timing. One of the cases in terms of Caesar uh, uh, crypto library, 
they were using the normal Python uh, comparison. If you do an equal between two strings, the first time that the strings are not equal, it's gonna just quit comparing. Uh, but you always, for crypto, you need to do a constant time uh, comparison of the strings. Otherwise, you can de uh, encrypt, uh, decrypt a message without knowing the key uh, by using some attacks. Uh, that's why uh, you have to take care of all these subtle things that you won't know of unless you're implementer of cryptographic libraries. So, like, never uh, implement your own crypto library. Uh, to be honest, doing crypto is not uh, hard. It's very easy. As we saw, if you just follow this footstep, you would have a secure cryptographic uh, protocol. Uh, however, most of the documentation that you find are online are either outdated or most of the time they're wrong. For example, they use uh, as a secret key, for example, they use password or as an example because they cannot just put some random number there. You just use very simplistic and if you just copy paste that code, you're producing wrong code or they sometimes suggest using ECB and right now we know that ECB is completely broken. So don't trust all the like, documentation that you find online. Uh, if uh, there is something called SSL, most of you are familiar with, for example, whenever you visit a website that had HTTPS, it means it's running SSL. So if you have data in transit, means real-time communication between a network, you can just, whatever program do, that you have, wrap it inside SSL, inside Python, you have the support. You can just wrap everything inside SSL and send it. You don't need to think about cryptographic yourself. Uh, and if you want to store some uh, data on your computer, for example, hard disk encryption, encrypting your files, this kind of stuff, there is another thing called PGP. Again, it's a secure protocol. You can just use that. You don't need to worry or think about implementing your own cryptographic libraries. That's it. Thank you. And are there any questions?